Hey everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at how to convert these Gamewell Century addressable series pull stations to conventional without damaging the addressable module. So this is a fairly easy project to complete, just about anybody regardless of your skill level with uh, electronics should be able to take care of this. Um, some of the tools you're going to want to have is obviously your uh, replacement ball end toggle switch. You need uh, about a half inch or so of uh, threading room on here and the diameter of the mounting hole should be uh, 15 30 seconds of an inch. Uh, you're also going to want an uh, interchangeable bit set with a screwdriver here and then it will also be helpful to have a couple other small screwdrivers, flathead blades, um, and then just a standard wrench to try to get that switch off the old station. So as you can see I have four different versions of the uh, game wall pull stations here so let's turn these around and take a look at some of the differences on the backs of them so as you can see here over the years game well has used uh, four different versions of the addressable module on the century stations up top here with the screw terminals we have two m46 series stations then the bottom two here with the wire leads these are both ms95 series stations so the removal on these three devices is essentially the same, but if you actually happen to have one of the older 1980 style M46-32i uh, series stations, this process is actually a lot easier. So we're going to go ahead and start with that series of station first. So here we have the Game Mall Century M46-32i, and like I just said, if you happen to own this model of station, the uh, replacement process, or uh, I should say conversion process for turning this to a conventional station is much easier because, uh, as you can see, the switch is connected to the terminals on the addressable module, so there's actually no need to replace the switch. You can just continue to use the switch that's already mounted on the rear of the device. So first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and pop the cover open. So you're going to see these two screws right here, directly uh, above and below the slots for mounting it onto a single gang back box. And you're also going to see accompanying um, nuts on the back of the uh, pull station. So a lot of times these nuts will be loose enough that you can just uh, put your finger on it and hold it in place while you remove the screw from the interior of the station, as you're seeing here. It almost didn't give any resistance. But if you do have a uh, screw in a nut set that does happen to be tighter, you can take your uh, bit here, find the right size, okay? And I suppose you could also use this with a, uh, a wrench instead if you needed to. And then uh, place the bit on the rear to hold that nut in place and then go ahead and unscrew the addressable module. So now for this station, it's as simple as removing the switch terminals from the terminals on the addressable module that are labeled red and black. And once we've removed the addressable module, this pull station is now ready to go as a conventional model. You can see we have the uh, bare switch terminals here. There's no longer any module to worry about, so we can go ahead and close up the pull station, and this one is ready to go. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the uh, MS95 series units. Now in contrast to the older M46 units, this is going to take a little bit more uh, work to convert this to conventional because to avoid destroying the addressable module, we do have to remove and replace this switch. So once again we're going to pop open the cover on the station. And once again you're going to see these two screws just like uh, on the M46. The only difference is that on this model, there is no nut to release on the back of either of these screws, 
because the threads are actually tapped directly into the metal chassis of the addressable module. So we can go ahead and take our flathead screwdriver and remove those. Just loosen these up a little bit and then you can take them out with your uh, fingers rather than trying to get the screwdriver to fit inside the body of the pull station. Alright, so now the addressable module is released from the body of the pull station and all we have to do now to remove it completely is take out the switch. This is where your pliers are going to come in handy because unfortunately with the toggle on the switch there's uh, no room to get a uh, wrench or a hex bit around onto this nut. So you can take your pliers and gently just release the nut on the interior of the full station. So then it should be loose enough in about a quarter turn that you can just remove it with your fingers again and not have to worry about the tool being in that super cramped spot. So now we have the switch release. You're going to want to keep this washer that you just saw fall off of the uh, old switch. You want to keep this so we can install it on the new switch. So now we're going to set the actual pull station body to the side and we're going to take a look at the new switch here. Like I begin. Uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you need to have a uh, 15 30 seconds uh, diameter uh, body on the switch, and you're going to need about uh, a half inch of length on the uh, switch body here to make sure it'll fit within the pull station. So, what we're going to do is take the old switch, and you just want to compare to make sure that the rearmost nut on both switches uh, end up giving just about the same amount of. Uh, space for the switch within the pull station. And as you can see these two are already adjusted pretty well. So even though the replacement switch is slightly longer than the new switch, or sorry, than the old switch, um, if I just run this nut a little bit farther up the switch body, then there should be a pretty equal amount of the switch that extends into the station. And that's important to make sure that the uh, handle will be able to close and seat properly. You can also see that the, uh, the toggle on the switch is a little bit longer than on the original switch, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a couple more turns just to make sure that there's enough clearance to accommodate that. Then like I said, you're going to want to keep this washer around. This keeps the uh, switch from rotating in the pull station. And we're going to grab the pull station body again and insert this into the switch body. Now just like with the uh, old washer, or sorry, the old nut, put this on here with your fingers at first until you get it nice and snug, and then we're actually gonna wait before tightening this down completely with the pliers, just so we can make sure that the pull station body will be able to close and the activation uh, lever works properly before we get everything too tight. So as you can see, it closes nicely and the handle seats into place on the switch. And if we give it a pull, now as you can see, it wasn't perfect here. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this a little bit more. It seems like there was a little bit too much of the switch body that was extending into the pull station. And you'll probably run into problems like this and you'll have to adjust the station a little bit as you go. So I'm going to go ahead and loosen the nut on the front a little bit and then I'm going to run this nut towards the station more so that more of the switch body is uh, outside of the chassis of the pull station. Go ahead and tighten this back up and see how that feels. Now as you can see when I pulled the activation lever, everything worked much more smoothly. So we can go ahead and tighten down this switch with the pliers. All right, that's not going anywhere. Make sure you keep track of the parts from the old 
adjustable module here so you can reassemble the pole station in the future. Go ahead and seal this up. And there you have it. This pole station is now converted to conventional operation that you can use on any panel. Pull this one back over here. And then of course, uh, if you ever want to put these pole stations back to addressable operation, we didn't ruin anything on the modules. So all you have to do is, uh, I don't know, play this video in reverse and you'll be able to completely reassemble all the devices uh, or all the components on the pole station and it will be ready to go once again as a fully addressable pole station. So I hope this uh, video helps out the few people who requested it and uh, if you have any more questions feel free to let me know in the comments. So thanks for watching.